I just found a new documentary on Netflix about Ghislaine Maxwell. And when I watch a documentary like this, I'm often interested in their birth charts. Do we find traces of their personality, what is explained in the documentary, in their birth charts? So I looked at her chart and then I decided to make a video on her. But I have to tell you, no, I don't think that we can find evil in birth charts. We can find some issues, yes. However, even if you have some of the same placements that I'm going to mention, it does not mean that you are just like her. Because one or two aspects do not determine anything. A birth chart is like a puzzle and we need to see the whole image. Okay, so please, if you have something in common with her when it comes to your birth chart, don't fret, it doesn't have to mean anything. And I actually have something in common with her, which is the AC Gemini and MC Aquarius. But that does not make me a Glenn Maxwell at all. <laughs> and then I need to point out that the birth chart is like a blueprint, but we do have free will. Let's say it's a color palette and you chose different color palette before you came down here to earth and let's say you chose more different types of green than another person and less yellowish colors or bluish colors so you have your own individual color palette but with that you can create whatever you want on earth and you can even overcome stuff if you have squares for example squares can be considered as something that is karmic but you can overcome a square so we are not determined by our astrology at all. It is just a basic setting and then we get to grow from there. So as you can tell, this is Ghislaine Maxwell's birth chart. She was born on December 25th, 1961 in France. I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but I think she is British or her family is British. And that's where I want to start actually with her family. We do see the north node down here in Leo, which means the south node would be the opposite. It would be in Aquarius in the 10th house. And the 10th house is quite interesting because it can talk about power, our public image. It's the Capricorn house. And her family was very prestigious. She grew up in a very, very rich family. Her father was a businessman. So her father was somebody who had a lot of power over other people. Also in the documentary they explained that her father was also somebody who had a lot of power over his children and she kind of grew up in his shadow and they may have had some kind of a toxic relationship. Then it's an Aquarius. Aquarius usually is the humanitarian placement. I don't know how humanitarian her father was or her upbringing was I don't think very much so because he stole money from his employees but Aquarius is also about networking and also about yeah being a bit of an outsider about being different than others Aquarius is part of the group but yet the outsider it's the black sheep within the group but still part of the group and still the networking the glue of the group in some kind of weird way so yes, her family, she grew up differently in this rich family, knowing royals, being friends with the royal family. So that is not a normal upbringing at all. So it seems like some of her dharma, you could say, something her soul wanted to learn, was to get a little bit out of this group dynamic, you know, this family dynamic and the oppression within the family and to become somebody who is more the star. Why? Because we have the North Node in Leo. With this combination with the South Node in Aquarius, she may have been seen, I think she had many siblings, as one of them or her father did not treat her that well and so she was not the star of the family, but she really longed to be the star of the family. She wanted to have something that is her own. And that is even stronger when we see that she has the Moon in Leo. Maybe we're going to talk about the Moon in Leo in a bit. But here we see for her, she had a strong soul urge to be somebody who is known or to be somebody who has this prestige. But more on her own, less when it is connected to 
her family dynamic, you know, the south note, the childhood. In astrology, what's interesting is the first thing we notice about a person is the rising sign. Then when we get to know them better, we see the sun sign. And when we know someone very close and intimately, it is the moon sign. So with her being a Gemini ascendant, that matches what we see in this documentary. She was described as someone who was very social, somebody who liked to have these events, and somebody who was a very, very good host, maybe a social butterfly, someone who could talk to people, somebody who was a bit alluring, somebody yeah, who could talk to people and make them feel warm and welcome. We must not forget in Tarot, Gemini is associated with the lovers. So she gave off this first impression of somebody who is very, very social and intelligent. She was known to be quite, or she is, she's not dead, known to be intelligent. Or at least she was seen as somebody who was intelligent and knew things. Or at least she was known, I'm talking a past tense because the documentary is very much, of course, also based on her past. So she was known as somebody who was social, a good host, and somebody, yeah, very good to talk to. But then when you get to know somebody a bit better, what we see then is the sun sign. And her sun sign is Capricorn over here. Capricorn, and she's guided in the eighth house, can be a bit controlling. And the eighth house is also a house of power, of darkness, of somebody who has secrets, somebody who feels drawn to darker aspects, could be related to death, could be for some related to occultism, also sex. The eighth house is the sex house, but not so much the fifth house. The fifth house is fun sex. It's the Leo house. It's playing. The eighth house is deep passion. It's control. It's a darker side of sex. Or with darker, I mean not as light and playful. Dark doesn't have to mean like SM. Dark is just like intense. We can say intense instead of dark. So this combination with the sun and Capricorn. The Capricorn we were talking about the 10th house, is the Capricorn house. Capricorn is very much, um, you could say, into power, into prestige, into status. It's the sign of achievement, the overachiever. Often it is somebody who is has a strong drive to be successful in their niche. And then that is combined with the 8th house, the power. I want to have power. And the sun is where we put a lot of life force in. So this is an aspect where you could say, yeah, that could be somebody who likes to control other people, somebody who likes to be in control, somebody who likes to be seen as someone who is powerful or you could say better, elite, above others. Definitely possible with this. And I remember in the documentary, one person said he met her and very soon he felt that there was something dark within her and he couldn't really point his finger on it, but he felt that there was something that is a bit darker. And yes, this could be it with the sun in the eighth house. It is something we are not always able to hide. The eighth house is also the house, the house of secrets, the things within us we like to hide. But when the sun shines there, it's not always very easy to hide those things because the sun is the light. Well, and then if you would get her even better, then you would get to know her moon sign here in Leo. And I have to think about one thing that was mentioned in the documentary about how she wanted to have a biography about herself published because she wanted Jeffrey Epstein to marry her. And she thought if she had a book that was really positive about herself, then that is something that he would see and then see her as somebody who would be a good wife for him. And that's Leo. The moon is our deepest hidden needs. For me, the most important aspect at all in our birth chart. The moon is what we crave for in secret. The moon is what we need to feel emotionally safe and stable. And hers is in Leo, along with the North Node in Leo. And moon in Leo needs to have attention. You will find many celebrities that have some Leo placement, often sun, moon, rising. That is not uncommon because people who have strong Leo or fifth house would be the Leo house. 
they are feeling drawn to be to being admired they want to be special they want to stand out they want to be seen as royalty and in her family in her upbringing it was her father who was seen as this royalty and in the documentary somebody described him as sitting there as the emperor and then Ghislaine kneeling in front of him in his lap basically with her head in his lap and crying so when she grew up the father had that figure but she craves to be that on her own she wants to be the one who stands out so these people moon and leo people often they have a strong need to get positive feedback to be seen to be public in some way and public doesn't have to mean so much on the outside especially since with her it's the fourth house so, so it's not too much about being a huge celebrity i don't think she wanted to be that it's i want to be seen at home i want to be the star at home with my loved ones and with the people that are close to me the fourth house is the home it's the security also about the subconscious the fourth house also can talk about the subconscious mind so she wanted to be seen by her spouse or the family around her and there she wanted to be the queen let's talk about mercury we got mercury just like the sun in the eighth house and capricorn which can say that her way of thinking with that scorpionic the eighth house is ruled by scorpio so this makes it a mixture between scorpio and capricorn energy so her thinking may have been rather radical maybe her words even so and i just remembered in the documentary people saying that she had this very sexual dark sense of humor and that's the eighth house the eighth house is the sex house is the dark house and mercury is the way we think and the way we communicate so in her communication she wanted to demonstrate power with this aspect with gemini rising usually very light-hearted you know talk a lot talk quite fast i mean you know that from my videos but with this aspect her way of thinking also was a lot darker than it may appear when you first met her this side comes out when you know her a little bit better and you can see inside her head where you can see how she maybe tried to dominate people with her expressions and that is what some of the victims say that she was very persuasive that she pressured some of the girls to do things they didn't want to do because this is talking about power i want to control i want to have power and with mercury i think maybe i am entitled to have that that is also how she was you could say diagnosed as maybe somebody who even has a psychopathic character maybe she was called oh i forgot it was a psychopath or sociopath i don't i forgot which one but someone in the documentary said that she was asked what those girls meant that she got for jeffrey and she said oh they're nothing they're nothing and this shows how entitled she felt about other people this way this radical thoughts of being entitled can be found here with mercury the thoughts radical would be the eighth house and entitlement could be capricorn because capricorn is very much about hierarchy so she thought herself as somebody who is above others something that confuses me a little bit i have to say is we have a lot of trining energy here to pluto and to uranus i would have expected there to be more squares we don't have those but also those trines to pluto pluto is connected to the eighth house which would make her way of thinking even more radical and the way she shows up with the sun in the eighth house and capricorn then connected to pluto that would make it even stronger before we go to mars and venus i would like to point out or say something about her mc and aquarius her and i we share this and people of the mc and aquarius the mc is the midheaven it shows you it can talk about your career to be honest i don't remember if they ever mentioned if she had a career or what her profession is besides being the society lady i don't remember 
But the MC is talking about what kind of job is good for us, how we want to be seen in the public. That's the difference between the AC and the MC. The AC is me you meet someone in person and it's the first impression we have. Also the physical impression. So let's say you have the celebrity and the AC could more rule like how are they looking physically? You know, are they attractive or not? Or what about them? But when we have the MC, it is more about how they would look in an impersonal level like you see celebrities that you don't know personally you may see like okay there is an gemini rising that celebrity may talk a lot and think fast and talk fast but it goes deeper with the mc the mc is more how you perceive this person this public person but also how they want to be perceived and if you're not a public persona then it's just the kind of job you have you know when you meet someone and they ask you okay what's your profession and it also tells you about what kind of profession might be good for you or not it's the public image and we all have one even if you're not a very public person and with her it's an aquarius aquarius is the humanitarian sign people with the mc in aquarius would be good in doing something different there would be good entrepreneurs i mean i have the mc in aquarius as well so i know what i'm talking about it's not the office kind of people it's the ones who want to change the world the ones who want to make something better quite often it's the ones to who want to bring a change can be connected to anything to do with the internet because that is what aquarius rules as well but also anything that is connected to humanitarian work or just quirky jobs you know the astrologer you know people who don't have this normal eight to five job anything like that could fit into the mc aquarius type in the documentary we see her having a ted talk about the ocean she at least pretended to be i don't know how real it is maybe nobody is like all bad if she really is a sociopath or psycho psychopath then maybe she does not care about the ocean but she wants to have the image of someone who is caring about the environment. So she was having TED Talks about saving the ocean, about some organization she either founded or that she was a Patreon or something like that. That is not surprising with the MC in Aquarius. With her, with everything going on, and if she's really a psychopath or a sociopath, then I maybe question a little bit how sincere that is. Maybe it is. Again, nobody may be all bad. Everybody may have some good attributes as well. But usually people with strong Aquarius, especially the Sun or the Moon and MC, they want to make this world better. Sincerely. You will find many philanthropists with this um, kind of placement. And not even that is surprising. Her doing charity work or wanting to at least to be seen again this is the public persona this is what how she wanted to be seen she wanted to be seen and perceived as somebody who does something for the environment so let's talk about this we do have the mars and venus and sagittarius actually mars is and you can see it down here we got mars at zero degree capricorn okay so this means mars is this little blue line and it's not that it's Sagittarius, 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 boom, Capricorn. When you're on the cusp, you have a shared energy of both. And this placement, not that surprising, to be honest. And now I have to say something to you Mars and Capricorns out there. This does most definitely not apply to every Mars and Capricorn, okay? Because we are all different. And you see, it's like a puzzle. We're talking about single pieces now that we're putting together but just it, because you have the same piece as her does not mean you have the same character as her mars in capricorn women they like men that are older often not all of them but very often older and powerful and some of them even rich this would be one of the gold digger placements but again we cannot go by simply one sign so mars in a woman's horoscope also tells you not just about her her drive her will her sexuality but also about what kind of man she is into 
And with Mars and Capricorn, yeah, it is the older guy often and the one who has power and is rich. As I said, it could be one of the gold digger placements. For her, that seems to be true. Her father died and then it came out that all of the money was gone. He stole money and all of it was gone. And then she met Jeffrey Epstein, who of course was a billionaire. And she was bragging about how rich he was and that if you wanted to invest with him, then you would have to be able to at least invest one billion dollars. She was very proud of that. Just because if you have Mars in Capricorn, does not necessarily mean that you're the same. <laughs> Often you want to watch for other significators that would hint at somebody's a gold digger. So Venus and Taurus could be another sign of a gold digger, but again, we cannot say that if we just have like one of those attributes because somebody may have completely contrary energies as well let's say somebody has the sun or the moon in aquarius or sagittarius very free energy so somebody with the sun or moon in aquarius or sagittarius would probably not want to have somebody who pays everything for them because those energies are very independent they have this strong urge to be independent so we have to look at everything. Yeah, this lady, she has Mars in Capricorn for one thing. So she likes men who have control, men who have power, men who have wealth. She maybe even gets turned on by that. And at the same time, she still has Mars in Sagittarius energy. And I'm not trying to shame every Mars in Sagittarius because again, <laughs> we have to look at the entire chart, but that can be one of the aspects of somebody who is promiscuative because Mars is sexuality and Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, the planet of plenty. So women with Mars and Sagittarius either want to have a lot of sex, <laughs> very playful of course, adventurous, but it could be many partners, many different people. And she did participate in at least some of the sexual assault and in the documentary you could see that she did participate in not just the grooming but also in having sex in front of some of these including other people multiple people could be right down the alley for mars and sagittarius people but again not every mars and sagittarius person because you may have strong scorpio energy at the same time here this combination is about control but scorpio energy can be for example very much into intimacy and very much into yeah keeping sex a secret the sex life not including others because it's very fixed energy and it's funny people often joke that sm was probably invented by a mars in scorpio i am a mars in scorpio and i would say no <laughs> because mars in scorpio sex is very much you want to deeply deeply connect with that one person yes but it's maybe a little bit about power struggle but it's more mostly about meeting somebody on the same level very often but of course every person is different my theory is, is that SM was definitely invented by a Mars and Capricorn <laughs> because that is more about control than Scorpio. I mean, in Toro, Capricorn is connected to the devil and the devil is in chains in Toro <laughs> or is chaining people that way. Capricorn is very much about hierarchy, about one person being over the other, you know, the master and the slave. We don't have that so much in... Scorpio energy. So yeah, we do have this combination with her Mars having Capricorn and Sagittarius energy at the same time, you know, wanting to have control, wanting to be extreme because you see it's also right on the cusp to the eighth house. The eighth house can also talk about violence, yes. But it's also the cusp to the seventh house. It's, you know, it's like sharing it with a spouse. So I don't think that she had I, I mean i don't know they didn't mention any of that in the documentary that she was having sex with random people that were not her spouse i think when she had these kind of sexual pleasures it was with her spouse together seventh house is my partner and then right on the couch to the eighth house is this dark energy it's this yeah it can be brutal and then with capricorn very strongly domineering and hierarchy there's hierarchy plays definitely a role in here 
I was also checking if they had like any connections to Saturn because Saturn would be the Capricorn energy. No, we don't have that, but we do have the Capricorn energy here because it's Capricorn energy is directly involved in Sagittarius energy against the plenty. Also, with the Sagittarius DC shows us whom do we attract. And so she would attract somebody in a relationship, people who have strong Sagittarius energy, somebody who is really playful and somebody who can come from another country. And she was European, but Jeffrey Epstein was American. So this is something that could hint at my spouse or my maybe from another country or very intelligent, you know, very well read. That could be Sagittarius energy. Somebody who travels a lot. So we're not doing synastry between Ghislaine and Jeffrey Epstein in this video. If you're interested in that, leave a comment below and we can analyze their dynamic and the relationship. But I just wanted to see something because with the Mars and Capricorn, as I said, these women are often into older men and powerful men and wealthy men. And I checked him. She was born in 61 and he was born in 53 so there is a bit of an age gap eight years it's not too much but yes some some age gap we do have here what i think is interesting is we do have the conjunction between mars and venus here with her it's like five degree off i would say so this conjunction could say that she was very motivated mars to please the person she loved venus to put a lot of effort into her love life and what i think is interesting is that he has the same with him it's even closer it's like one degree apart so oh, let's see venus in no oh, both 16 degree look he has them in pisces pisces is also ruled by jupiter co-ruled by neptune and as i said somebody who has mars in one of the signs that are ruled by jupiter which would be sagittarius and also pisces may have a strong sex drive i mean pisces is not as fiery but it's about plenty so maybe not necessarily the strongest drive for all people with pisces energy but they may have problems to know their boundaries pisces doesn't really know boundaries but it could imply having many people because of the Jupiter aspect. You see, it's also sex styling um, Jupiter. So that can talk about a strong drive if we have Jupiter evolved with Mars or have it in one of the Jupiter signs. I would say Sagittarius maybe a bit more than Pisces, but again, Pisces is also ruled by Jupiter and can talk about a lot of sex. It's also funny that they have different moon notes you know hers was going from aquarius to leo and his is vice versa but no we're not going we're not doing this right now <laughs> another thing is of course he was a capricorn sun and you see him he's also right on the cusp between capricorn and aquarius so they do share this capricorn energy as well let's see his son yeah zero degree aquarius a zero degree aquarius person would definitely still have strong capricorn energy as i said it's not jumping from one energy to the other there is a phase where it's mixed energy and her being a leo moon him being aries moon of course they both have fire moons but nope we are not talking about this we were talking about Ghislaine. And yeah, that is probably all I have to say about her. So please like, subscribe, share this video. If you want your own analysis like this, of course you can contact me. My contact information is below. Check out my other astrology videos where I analyze the soul connections of celebrities. And check out my playlist where I tell you what would be your perfect match i do have a video for each sign what would be your perfect match in astrology so i do see you in those videos or in social media you can find me on facebook i have an astrology facebook group it's pretty new so very small yet you can please help me, me by Instagram liking sharing TikTok. subscribing if it helped you a lot if you liked this video a lot you can leave a little tip my paypal is below and you can contact me for personal coaching or your own analysis and 
I see you in another video or in a personal coaching or video. Until then, I wish you all the best now. Bye-bye.